what unique contribution to your community the fulfillment um, of your purpose will serve? Well, you know, to my community, um, serving has been the most unique part of my life. It has been the thing that has... You, let me put it like this. Some people seek a position. Some people seek um, title. Some people seek the job that would um, propel them in a place of um, wealth. Some people do what they do just for the paycheck, basically. But I found out it has been my servanthood that has created wealth for me. It has created everything I've ever desired to want to be a part of in a life of luxury, wealth, what have you. It's been the ability to just um, serve, yet and still um, be okay with just serving. In other words, when I started my business, um, I knew for a fact that I couldn't look to the other businesses that were in um, the category that I was in and find myself imitating them because I feel as if their purpose was for them. But I found myself leaning on the only thing that I ever knew, and that was making sure I provide service, which is no more than servanthood. And so when, when providing a service, going up and beyond and above the call of duty on this job. In other words, I even had somebody say, oh, you got to be so lucky to just be in your own business. You don't have a boss. Well, listen, I've always allowed my customers to be my boss. So to some, they can think you don't have a boss, but my customers, they are my boss. And so I found myself staying in the path of just serving. In other words, not the title. I don't, I don't, if if you come into any of my business, it doesn't matter to me if you know I own it or if I work there. See, to some people, you got to know I own it. But to me, you just got to know I work there. Jeez. And I don't, I don't look for anything outside of just wanting to be the solution to what may be the problem. In other words, I just want to be that combination that unlocks the lock. I don't want to um, be the person that has to figure out um, how much you got before I can help you. I don't want to be that customer to think how much you got before you could, you know, be a part of what I got going. It doesn't matter because I found out through serving. And if you do the serving part in a pure way, the money will come. The money is not tied to anything other than um, you being willing, being faithful to the position, to the job, being faithful to the call of duty, and just being willing to do the work. And I think most of us that are seeking purpose, we found, we, we found a way to receive all of the accolades that come along with operating in purpose, but we've never done the work that would tie us into living a purpose-filled life a purpose journey to life. We haven't found out that we have to do the work. And the work sometimes is just yourself. I think that's a good place to transition to a living in purpose. And I want you to tie, you know, what it is to live in purpose, to be aligned with your purpose and to walk in your purpose. But I want you to tie that into the work that you're currently doing in your business life. And mm -hmm. you choose any of the many businesses that you run, and you 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 align that and show you know show our audience how your work supports your your purposeful walk. Uh, well, it's interesting that you would ask me that, Doctor Steves, because currently for the listener, for the viewer, um, I am a licensed optician, where my wife and I both run um, an optical shop. And we have two different optical shops and we also have a restaurant. Uh, but let's just um, stay in line with um, the optical shop. The optical shop has served such a platform for me to operate in my purpose. Because as we have uh, come to find out um, just in this conversation, 
that my purpose truly is my servanthood. And I get the opportunity within my business, being a deacon in the church, um, I get the opportunity to speak to people and allow people to be restored, not with just natural eyesight, but also with a spiritual insight. And that's because of my faith. Um, that's because of my belief. That That's because of the teachings that I operate out of and from. And so for me, it's quite different because I don't want to be spooky and I don't want to scare anybody. But I am the one that get to speak to people that are lost in their dreams. They're lost in their goals. They're lost in um, the understanding as to what it looks like to be where they are. In other words, I get to speak to that person that has been gifted with gifts uh, that will propel them to their destiny, as well as provide them and allow them to operate in their purpose. And most times they don't get it because they missed out on a very important adage in the Bible that's taught throughout the Bible. Um, but as, you know, the ones with the gifts and the talents. Um, and that we're supposed to do business until, let's say, Jesus returned. And um, what happens is they most times don't recognize their gifts or their talents because for whatever reason, uh, they allow strongholds, they allow negative mindset things to penetrate their mind and to begin uh, to doubt their mind or their might. In other words, they sometimes lose out on uh, insight on how to get it done. And I'm that person that gets the opportunity in an optical shop, a glass, eyeglass shop, <laughs> to somewhat disturb their thought pattern and begin to just lay it on the line for them. So, um, and my line of work is very important that I stay in tune with a keen ear to be able to hear and listen. Because most times, the person that will come into my space and that would allow me to listen or allow me to respond to what they have said will find themselves now operating from a place of spirituality. And I think a lot of times people um, are caught off guard because truly my place of business has become a marketplace. In other words, uh, now I get to talk to the people who otherwise probably wouldn't step foot into a church for whatever reason and for whatever beliefs they may have. Um, but it gives me the opportunity uh, to sometimes listen to them and then begin to unravel a lot of the confusion that they possess in their own mindset because maybe somebody in the family has not um, given them the support that they need to accomplish or to feel confident and the thoughts that they're having when it comes down to doing business until the master return. And so my, my position and my job as a servant is to get them to understand that you, you, you're operating with maybe a gift that's considered to be one gift, whereas if you're comparing yourself to the person that is now operating with four gifts, so you're finding yourself and thinking that you're inadequate because you only can do this one thing. But the true purpose of that one thing is for you to do it and not bury it to the point to where you can't be welcome into the kingdom. And so I want the listener to understand today, maybe it's uh, apropos for me to just tell you that um, all you have to do is do that one thing that you know you do well, that you know the family has complimented you. In other words, you're the one that, uh, let's say, make hats, or you're the one that um, make bread, or you're the one that make the best chicken on the grill. In other words, you're one, one of the ones that make the best jerk chicken. It's time now that you step out and get into the marketplace of selling that bread, that jerk chicken, or whatever it might be that they keep complimenting, they keep telling you, oh my God, this is so awesome. You have the best bread, the best chicken. But yet and still, you don't have the mindset to get you to understand that that's a purpose. That gift is for a purpose. And that purpose is for you to stretch the kingdom. 
until the master returns. In other words, step out there and don't be afraid. See, that's my job, sir. So when it comes down to the customer that walk in the door for eyeglasses, it's really my job, it's my purpose to take that vision that they are that find they find themselves askewed in so many ways. It's my position to be the Windex in their life, to clean the fog off the lenses, whether it be in the natural or whether it be in the spiritual realm. I have to now give them the opportunity to see clearer. It's no use of coming into an eyeglass shop blind <laughs> and leaving blind. When you come in, it's my purpose. It's my purpose, sir, to make sure you're seeing better. So I found now that to see better sometimes means we have to think better. And to think better means you have to now be willing to do better. And if you're going to find yourself doing better, then you just got to know that doing better is the thing that gets you to the next level, preparing you for the next dimension of your life. So that's my purpose inside of the eyeglass position that I hold. You know, it is interesting that it's a, an eyeglass and optometry business is about helping people see better. And, it. And, but it's not just about seeing as we understand the meaning of seeing, but it's more clarity about life. And that's there what you you're talking about. It's yes. just adding all that that other pieces to the, 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 the you know, the, the notion of, of growing and developing and learning and all that good stuff. So your your business place is a center of all of that. You know, where right. it's not just about putting these lens on, but it's actually using the lenses. It's using the lenses. And then if I may just, I want to tell you something quick. And in the food business, the mm -hmm. journey of the food business has been all over the place. It has tested my faith. It has tested my servanthood. It has tested my obedience. It has tested me honoring along the way. And so honestly, when you come into the food realm of what we do, now all I have for you is a testimony. And the testimony is something that is described and declared that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of, is of the testimony. So my thing is, when you now come into the food realm of it, I have, I have nothing but a testimony for you. And so in that testimony, you'll find yourself or you'll hear me telling you that if I can do it, and if I was blessed to be strengthened along the way to get through this, the God I serve has no respect of person. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. So it leaves me in a place where I can always lift him up, but at the same time, Declare and decree upon a person that there's still time for them to live out their true purpose. So, was it a a specific event or a series of event that was occurring in your life that was that wake up call for you? Uh yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it started at an early age. It started at an early age. And most of it became, honestly, um, a test to what spiritually um, impact my life. And at, at the nursing home, th this is spooky for some that may not believe and don't understand, but it's the God and the truth. Uh, Dr. Stevenson, I was pushing a patient down to what would be the dining room. And um, out of nowhere, I felt the cold wind, as some would say, a breath of fresh air just came through the hallway where I was rolling this patient down to the dining room. But it was accompanied by a small, quiet um, voice that I never heard before. And that voice said to me, you'll never want for nothing. And I looked all I looked to my left, I looked to my right, like, who said that? I stopped with that patient in the middle of the floor because I could not believe I heard something, somebody say, you never want for nothing. It, it blew me away. So my whole life has been to operate in faith, believing 
but wondering if I would ever want for anything. In other words, I would do whatever because I believe that in doing it, that I would want for nothing. And sir, I'm here to say, not just because of what I heard, but because I was willing to apply the work to what I heard. You see, I was then able to accomplish the things that left me in a place to where I never really truly wanted for anything. And, and, and I'll say this, when I compare it to the teachings of my mother and my father, and I remember just things in life. I was in elementary school. The teacher wanted to promote me because she felt like I was uh, doing well enough to where I could be in the next grade. And I never will forget that te that same teacher gave me a ride home because she was keeping me after school every day, testing me. And um, she gave me a ride home. And every one of my childhood friends in the neighborhood, they asked me, who was that lady that gave me a ride? I said, that's my school teacher that gave me a ride home. They said, she must be rich. <laughs> she was driving a Mercedes Benz. I didn't, I'd never heard of a Mercedes Benz in my life. You, you understand, I'm the baby of 14. And I'm coming home from elementary school, which means my older sisters and brothers, they well on in age and they gone. <laughs> so I get in the house and I ask my mom, I said, I said, mom, I said, uh, my teacher must be rich. I said, because all my friends outside told me that uh, she was driving a Mercedes Benz. And so the thing that, still rings extremely clear in my ears, sir. My mother reply was, well, no, you don't have to be rich to drive a Mercedes. You just have to be willing to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I found out, my mom told me, and my dad told me, he said, if you're willing to go to work for it, you could have what you want. And so I find myself mm. always paying attention to the voice that I heard. You'll never want for nothing. But then I package it with what my mom and dad said. You can have anything you want as long as you're willing to work for it. <laughs> that is so awesome. I find myself just working for what I want. Mm. And so that along with um, recognizing a purpose in your life, mm. it keeps you grounded. Don't have a desire in your heart and not be willing to work. The Bible says faith without works is dead. The Bible says if you want to be pleasing unto God, then you have to have faith. In other words, he said it's impossible to please God without faith. So I want somebody that's listening today to recognize purpose in life means you're going to have to operate with a certain level of faith. You won't get to that purpose. You won't obtain purpose in your life if you just can't even believe in the least common denominator of all of it, and that is yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to. You know, believing in self, you can't say enough of that. You know, because at the end of the day, you can be gifted with so many things, but if you're not willing to go out there and take that walk and do what is necessary, then it's all gifts gone wasted. Mm -hmm.